Herr Mankel, 1991 ist Ihr letzter Ballanderfall erschienen im Original. 2001 unter dem Titel Die Brandmauer in Deutschland. Jetzt ist ja schon einiges an Zeit vergangen. Wieso kommt jetzt ein neuer letzter Ballander? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, for many years, I didn't think that I would write another book. I thought really, hand on my heart, that I had done it. Mm -hmm. But five years ago, I started to think maybe there is another book. Still, a book that is more about his own life. And at the same time, I was thinking very much about political scandals in Sweden during my lifetime. And I came to think about what happened in the beginnings of the 80s. Uh, the question whether it was Russian submarines in Swedish waters. And then when I found the possibility, I think, to put these two stories together, mm -hmm. then I decided, yes, there is one more book to write. And I decided that three years ago, and now it's out. But hand on my heart again, this will forever be the last one. Reden wir nochmal über Ihr neues Buch, ohne von der Geschichte des Buches zu viel zu erfahren. Aber es gibt einen realen Hintergrund in den 80er Jahren. Ein U-Boot spielt eine Rolle, deswegen mhm. sind wir hier auch in der Nähe von einem U-Boot und Kriegsschiffen. Mhm. Können Sie kurz umreißen, was da passiert ist in Schweden in den 80er mhm. Jahren und was, der, was die Grundlage für mhm. das Buch ist? Uh, in 1982, in the autumn, there was a sudden alarm among the Swedish Navy that there had been seen U-boats, submarines, inside the archipelago outside of Stockholm. And so the Navy started to try to hunt for these submarines. They never got anyone up. Mm -hmm. But everyone said this must be Russian submarines. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was a lot of havoc. And at the same time, Olof Palme became prime minister again. And uh, there was, a, you know, a political committee to try to find out what really had happened. And then in 1983, one day in March, and this is exactly what happened. Mr. Palme, as prime minister, got this work of the committee. And he was so angry after having read it, so he threw it away and said, where the hell? is the evidence that this was su Russian submarines. There were no evidence. Mm -hmm. And that is the background. And then I found a way that could uh, link Wallander of today with these things. Mm -hmm. I won't tell you more about it because yeah. people should read the book. Sie sollen das Buch lesen, genau. Gehen wir dann nochmal zurück in der Zeit. Wie sind Sie denn damals auf die Figur des Wallander gekommen? It is exactly 20 years ago, 1989, the same year when you saw what happened in Europe, the fall of the Berlin Wall and everything. And I had a feeling that I wanted to try to write about, in one way, the big changes that was happening in that time in Europe. That is also why I chose a small city very close to the continent, down south in Sweden. And, uh, I didn't really have an idea to write more than one book about him from the beginning, but I realized quite quickly that I had invented an instrument that I could use to tell a lot of stories. Uh, and I think I wrote as much as four books before I realized, well, I will continue to write more about him, really. So it was one book, two books, three books, four books, and then it became a series. Die große Frage ist natürlich, gibt es eine Ähnlichkeit zwischen Ihnen und der Figur Valanda? Three. One, we have the same age. Secondly, we are very fond of Italian opera. And thirdly, we work a lot. Besides that, we have nothing in common. And I really honestly think that if he would have been alive like you, or the photographer, or the sound engineer, I don't think we would have been friends, really, because we are so not equal at all. And I really, in many ways, don't like him. When we now talk about the last Fall that you have written, do you have still something that you would say that you don't know Wallander to 100 percent? Or is the character of Wallander to 100 percent developed? Do you know that figure? There is no secret anymore. 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 There is no secret an
all of him. And the best way to explain that is that when I see, for example, now Kenneth Branagh, who mm -hmm. is doing uh, uh, the BBC versions of Wallander, the way Kenneth Branagh does it tells me a lot of things about Wallander that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so is the same with Christa Henriksson and even Rolf Laskold. They told me a lot of the person that I didn't know. And I'm quite sure that there is a lot of things about him, the character, that I do not know. Because I do not know everything about myself. Mm -hmm. And you do not know everything about yourself. Because there are always places in yourself that you don't know about. That is what makes life so exciting. That you still can find secrets in yourself, and I guess that goes for Wallander too. Gibt es uh, Momente, wo Sie das Gefühl haben, dass Sie von Wallander etwas lernen können? <laughs> It's a good question. I never thought of it. Congratulations to the question. Thank you. Because very much. this is a new question for me. Thank you. Uh, I honestly, I don't have a very intelligent answer to that, but I guess it must have been situations where I thought about how he would react, that also told me in a way, yeah, but this is right. This is also the way I should react. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I'm, I'm put like that. I wasn't prepared to this question. Thanks a lot. After 20 years, I get the question that I wasn't prepared to. What a wonderful. moment.